Oh. Uh-huh. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जाने की जाने के वल्लभ लक्ष्मण हनुमान की श्री श्री गौ नेता की श्रील प्रभुपाद की समावेत भक्त वृंद की कलयुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की गौर प्रेमानंदी ओम ज्ञान थिरंद ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोवेष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयंकनाम ददा स्वदांतिक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुता पदकम श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीरूपम सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथा तम सजीव साइत सवरूत पुरीजला सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधाकृष्ण पद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विदा नमा ओं विष्णुपाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामीना नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणे प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यशतारिणे नमो महाबलन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय ते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्षे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांतराधा कांत नमस्तुते सप्तगान गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि पांचाकदरोपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएश्वद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया 
ಭಗವತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕಿ ನಂದನಾಯ ಚ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ What was the verse number yesterday? Five point, one point. Five? Not one. Seven, yeah. Five, seven? Eleven, yeah. So we finished the seventh chapter. It was a short chapter. Yeah. So, yesterday the main, uh, our focus point was about how bharat went to the forest isn't it hmm. he how he went to the forest and how he practiced uh, uh, took spiritual life very seriously in the human form of life hmm. so we were also talking about the four phases of life hmm. you know brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha sanyas so we, we spoke those things yesterday mainly uh, i think we also spoke more about uh after going to forest what was he doing he was chanting the gayatri mantra to make the mind steady and uh, focused in spiritual life then he also chanted the vedic mantras and worship lord narayana with a singular focus in this way definitely he made purification of heart and made advancement in spiritual life so we also learned that we should also be focused so i gave many examples yesterday like pouring oil or welding or arjuna's concentration and all that we discussed yesterday not let the eyes and ears wander but be very focused in our sadhana so therefore spiritual life means we withdraw our um, absorption in material clutter withdraw our mind from matter and absorb it in spirit supreme spirit krishna that is spiritual life so to withdraw the mind from the material clutter of the material world for that we have to cultivate the chanting and focus and concentration one pointed focus so then uh, by the chanting mind becomes purified and we know what is right what is wrong and in this way we can absorb in spiritual life so that was the main thing yesterday today we are going to the eighth chapter shri uh, shukavu vacha so this is the prose order verse so we will not recite it he says ekada tu maha nadyam krita abhishek nayam nayamika avashyako brahmaksharam abhignano muhurta trayam udakanta upavivesha he is saying that once once upon a time that means he has spent many months years in the forest uh, as i told you one important thing yesterday earlier he was respected by you know, millions of people showering flowers upon him he was king of the world and welcoming him and all that now he is in the forest alone so there is no distraction from prestige or status or uh, any distinction in society or any designations he has externally at least he has escaped from all those things uh, 
So there is no uh, hindrance to his spiritual life by any kind of uh, pride bringing uh, privileges. Hmm? Like for example, if you go to some place and people welcome you in the airport, they garland you, you know, they shower flowers upon you and they do JJ car for you and all that. So these things can increase our pride, correct, no? But now for him there was no uh, reason to become proud in the forest because there is no one to see him. He was alone, correct, no? no? Nor was there any material attachments, namely, you know, uh, wife or children uh, or uncle, aunt, mother, father who will be asking about his well-being or anything, isn't it? Because in this world, uh, what are considered as material attachments? Attachment to gold, attachment to land, attachment to women, attachment to, you know, post and position, hmm? and uh, attachment to the pleasures of this world, huh? Shabda Sparsha, Rasarupaganda, for all these things. One can become attached to these things. His own as Radha Govind Maharaj was telling, in one of his lectures I was hearing, he said, Kalidas has written many poems. In one poem, Kalidas uh, wrote that, uh, a woman, she kicked her husband on the head. <clears throat> the husband was telling, Oh, my dear wife, your lotus feet should not be hurt by my sharp hair. <laughs> <laughs> she told him, What are you talking? I don't have any lotus feet. Krishna has lotus feet. Why are you attracted to my feet? He said. So Maharaj was telling, When a living entity becomes attached to wife, then one can become so mad. <laughs> Considering that feet to be lotus feet. And, and also, many poets glorify the, you know, the nectar emanating from the mouth of a woman. But everybody knows it's just a sputum or saliva. There's nothing so great about it. But Bhagavatam talks about another thing that comes from the lips of great Vaishnavas. Na kama ye na Na yatra yushma charanam buja savah mahattama antar hridayan mukhachito vidatsva karna yutame shame varaha varahi is saying, uh, I don't want to go to Brahman, Brahma Jyoti, my dear Lord, because there the nectar is not available, he says. And the Lord is asking, What nectar are you talking about? He says, That nectar which emanates from the lips of great uh, pure devotees. Uh, and that is not available there. Really, nectar are, uh, comes from the lips of few devotees. Generally, what comes from the lips? <laughs> from the mouth, the saliva comes. Huh? Or some speech comes. But what is that nectar you are talking about? Uh, you are saying, next verse, anybody knows the next verse? You can just find out. Mm. He is telling in the heart of Mahatma devotees, there is a Amrit Kalash, which they carry. And then when they speak, that nectar comes out, uh, the same honey from their uh, Amrit Kalash, from their heart, it comes out through the mouth. And then he's saying, for uh, taking, partaking uh, the advantage of that nectar from the mouth of great devotees, I want millions of years, he's saying. <laughs> These two years are not enough, he's saying. What is the next verse? Anybody found out? If you say na kama ye, if you put it immediately, it will come. Na kama ye natha. Okay, I can find that. Sa uttama shloka mahan mukhachyato. He is saying, sa uttama shloka mahan mukhachyato. Mahat means Mahatma Purushas. From the Mahatma devotees, mukha, sa uttama shloka mahan mukhachyato. Uttama shloka means the glorification of Lord is compared to honey mixed with the saffron dust particles of the Lord's lotus feet. So, why is it saffron dust particles? Because it is holy. And why is it compared to honey? Because it is nectarian. So, sa vuttama shloka mahan mukachyato bhavat padam boja sudha kana nilaha smritir puna smritir vismrita tatpa varpanam kuyoginam no vitaratya lambarehi is telling sa vuttama shloka mahan mukachyato mukachyato means to fall. Achyata means which doesn't fall. Correct, no? Chuta. From the lips of the Mahatma devotees, the honey mixed with the saffron particles of Lord's lotus feet drips out. When 
Bhavat Padam Boja Sudha Kanani Raha. When they are talking, your glory is Uttama Shloka. When they are glorifying your pastimes through songs, through descriptions of your Nam Rupa Guna Leela, when they do that, that time this nectar comes out, he is saying. Bhavat Pada Ambuja, he is saying. Your lotus feet. In your lotus feet, the honey mixed with the saffron particles of your feet is coming down. And that honey from your lotus feet is gathered by pure devotees and kept in their heart in a golden kalash. And then that comes out when they speak, he is saying. Bhavat Pada Ambuja Sudha Kana Anilakas Smritir. What is it? Smritir? Punar Vispritta Tattva Bharatmana. That means we have become Vismrita Jeevas in this world, forgetful Jeevas. But when we partake of the nectar, when the Mahatma devotees speak, that gives Punaha Smriti. Huh? That means Priti comes back. Krishna said, no, Nashto Moha Smritir Labdha. Like that, our remembrance of Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna's beautiful form, his pastimes, activities, everything becomes re- and meaningful, relishable, enjoyable, uh, and becomes uh, be all and end all for us when we hear from the lips of Mahatma devotees. He is saying that is actual nectar uh, by partaking which we can go back home, back to Godhead. But ordinary conditioned souls are talking about uh, you know some nectar emanating from the lips of beautiful women as they write poems, uh, but that is only just saliva and sputum. Uh, it's mundane. Therefore, you will see all these so-called pleasures of this world are enjoyed in the dark of the night because night, night means it, it is symptomatic of ignorance. You will see beer bars, you can see they flourish in the night. Temples, people come in the morning. Angal <laughs> because it is Sattva Guna. Correct, no? Beer bars, they put a dim light and they put some very, uh, you know, some music and people are coming and drinking liquor and everything. Everything is in Tamaguna. Similarly, the attachment, attraction between man and woman, or attraction for drinking liquor and smoking, everything is in the Tamaguna, you will see that. So, in this way, uh, uh, one thing is the, the man is being kicked by her on his head, but he is still attached to her. What is that attachment called as? It's called moha. It's called moha. Moha means considering temporary things to be permanent. Impure things to be pure. Hmm. Pain producing things to be pleasure producing. That is called moha. Hmm. So, after we become devotees, does this moha go away? It doesn't go away very easily. Even after we become devotees, we can wear tilak, kantimala, japa, japa beads, everything we may have. We become devotees. Therefore, the Varnashrama has kept brahmacharya, grihastha, vanaprasa, sanyas. So, the attraction is there. In the 11th canto Bhagavatam, in Uddhava Gita, Lord Krishna tells Uddhava, my dear Uddhava, a, a grihastha devotee who has wife, children, a man, he does devotional service very nicely, enthusiastically. But sometimes he becomes attached to his wife or to children. Uh, and after becoming attached to them, he quickly re- comes back to consciousness and thinks, Alas, my dear Lord, I am still in the Andakopam of material existence. I am attached to family pleasures. Hmm? not taking your bhakti very seriously. So, uh, like our uh, uh, Uddhava, uh, two Uddhava, Lord Krishna says that such a devotee should not become disheartened and give up Krishna consciousness, nor should a devotee become depressed, nor should a devotee uh, leave the bhakti and go away. Then what should he do? He says, not able to totally give up sense gratification. A devotee should feel repentance and remorse. And pray to the Lord. My dear Lord, please purify my heart. Increase my attachment to you. Increase my attraction for you. Because everything about you is sweet. Just one minute. Yeah. See, the devote, therefore, the devotee should recite the Srimad Bhagavatam to understand this. How everything about the Lord is sweet. Adaram, Maduram, 
वदनम मधुरम अधरम मधुरम वदनम मधुरम नयनम मधुरम हसीतम मधुरम नयनम मधुरम हसीतम हृदय मधुरम गमनम मधुरम हृदय मधुरम मधुराधिपते रखिल मधुरम मधुराधिपते सी सिंह द स्पिरिचुअल रेलम यू विल फाइंड the bodies are all very beautiful lord is very beautiful the devotees are also very beautiful what are their bodies made up of sachidananda swarupam huh? actually that's the beauty of the spiritual world one day uh, one of proper disciples uh, made one item in the kitchen hmm? that was some special item somewhat like rava ladu type of item hmm? but many things are put up in that it was not intended to be made Uh, Asrava led to something else came out of that. So they went and gave to Prabhupada. Prabhupada ate it. As soon as Prabhupada tasted it, he said, "Oh, this is simply wonderful." He said. And then Prabhupada, they asked Prabhupada, "What name can we give for this?" Prabhupada said, "Call it as simply wonderfuls." <laughs> uh, and that became very popular recipe after that. Now all over this country, people make. And then Prabhupada said, "Just see, Krishna's prasadam is simply wonderful." Everybody said, "Hari Bo." They said, "Prabhu said, 'The Krishna is so wonderful.'" Then, and then he said, "And Krishna's beloved Radha Rani, she is so merciful and she is so wonderful." He said, "And Krishna's cows are so wonderful, and Krishna's devotees are so wonderful." And Prabhu said, "All of you are wonderful. Krishna conscious philosophy is so wonderful. You know, our chanting and dancing is so wonderful. You know, like the Prabhu said, Prabhu said, ultimately everything is wonderful." He said, "In in relation to Krishna, so." This song is similar song. He says, when Krishna plays on the moonlit night, the moon uh, shine shines on his lips. So that, therefore, his lips look very beautiful, and his face is like a full moon. Radha Bandhaman Chandra, we say, no, is like a full moon. Huh? It's very beautiful. And Nayana Madram, his eyes are like lotus petals. Shanta Karam Pujakshanam Padmanabham Sureshram Vishwadaram Gayan Sureshram Megavarnam Shubhangam Lakshmi Kantham. Ah, there is Kamala Nayana. Hmm? and then hasitam madram when he smiles uh, the gopis are describing krishna's smile when he is returning in the evening after herding the cows and calves they are talking about his curly locks of blackish hair and his loving glance and the beautiful smile hmm? that is hasitam uh, in the bhagavatam it is said if you can see the smile of the deity your ocean of suffering can be evaporated हासम हरे रवनता किल लोक तीव्र शोक अश्रु सागर विशोषण अत्युदारम इट इज सेट इट कैन एवापरेट वोस्ट एन ऑफ सफरिंग्स मेनी पीपल कम एंड से आई एम सफरिंग सो मच प्लीज प्रे फॉर मी एक्चुअली दे शुड अप्रिशिएट द स्माइल ऑफ द डेटी फ्रॉम देन इज सेइंग हृदय मधुरम हिज हार्ट इज वेरी ब्यूटीफुल व्हाई हाउ ही ट्रीट सुदामा देयरफॉर हिज हार्ट इज वेरी ब्यूटीफुल आई शोड यू यस्टरडे हाउ ही ट्रीट Uh, and one of the programs i was showing how krishna treats the peacocks with respect huh? so you will see his heart is very beautiful <clears throat> when he walks to the forest uh, the gopis are appreciating the, the lotus feet of krishna walking to the forest talasi adraja tarayan pashu nale na sundaram When you walk to the forest, you are Trinachara Anugam. Hmm? Trinachara Anugam means Trin is grass. Trinachara means who eats grass? Cow. Anugam means one who follows the cow. Who is following? Krishna's lotus feet is following. <laughs> so Trinachara Anugam. So your lotus feet are following the cows, keeping them in the friend, 
and your feet are so tender but you are putting your feet over the grasses and thickets and the um, pebbles and thorns in the forest and you are such a great lover of cows your name is govinda your name is gopal isn't it so they are appreciating so in this way his gamanam is walking is beautiful and therefore maduradipate er akilam madram everything about him is beautiful venur madura renur madura saying uh, when krishna plays on the flute not only you know gopis are attracted gopas are also attracted nadyo narascha mudita kupita vinime uh, nimesha like that it says not only naris are attracted naras are also attracted not only naris and naras even the peacocks even the cuckoos even the deers and the cows calves demigods everybody is attracted to his flute similarly the dust of his lotus feet has delivered many Ahilya was delivered, Kaliya was delivered. Hmm? He has kept his dust of his lotus feet on many and delivered them. And his hands are also pani. His hands are very fragrant, hmm? like uh, the whirl of a lotus smells very fragrantly, like that. Hmm? So when he touches his hand to somebody's head, immediately they will get millions of benedictions. It's called as Varadaraj. You know, when he keeps his hand like this, Varadaraj, hmm? and giver of benedictions. Pado Madra, his feet are wonderful, uh, lotus feet. Uh, he, why he keeps his lotus feet like this? So that all the 16 symbols in his feet can easily be accessible to his devotees. Therefore, Krishna is more merciful than our uh, Vishnu and Ram also. Vishnu and Ram stand in attention pose like in NCC. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Krishna stands like this so that his 16 symbols are immediately activ- activatable. Huh? therefore his lotus feet are beautiful and then rityam madram he dances on the hoods of kaliya and all the uh, demigods are amazed by that and maybe we will show a little bit of vishnu's dance we will try we'll check it out saptakajam saptakannam saptakarum saptajam saptakajam saptakannam saptakarum ಮುಭವ <laughs> ಶೀಲ ಅತಿಶಯ ನೀಲ ಧೃತ ಪದಲೋ ಕುಜನಂತರಿತ ಕಾಲ ವಿಧಿನುತ ಶೀಲ ಅತಿಶಯ ನೀಲ ಧೃತ ಪದ ಮುಖ ಪರ ಮಂತಸ್ಮಿತ ನವರ ಪೂಜಿತ ಪದೈವಲಾ 
ಹರಿ ಜಯ ವಿಜಯಿ ಭವನಂದ ಕುಮಾರ ಭಜನ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಕಿಶೋರ ಕಳೀಯ ನಟನಾನಂದ ಗಂಭೀರ ಕರುಣಾರ ಸಹಿತ ಭಾವ ಶರೀರ ಮದ ಮಧುಕರ ಮಧುಪಥರ ಲಸ ಮನಯನ ಕಮಲ ದಲ ಚಲನ ಮುನಿ ಹೃದಯ ಮಪಿಚೋರ ಚಾತುರ ದಯಾಕರ ರಾಧಿ ಭೀಕರ ಮದ ಮಧುಕರ ಮಧುಪಥರ ಲಸ ಮನಯನ ಕಮಲ ದಲ ಚಲನ ಮುನಿ ಹೃದಯ ಮಪಿಚೋರ ಚಾತುರ ದಯಾಕರ ರಾಧಿ ಭೀಕರ ಮದ ಮಧುಕರ ಮಧುಪಥರ ಲಸ ಮನಯನ ಕಮಲ ದಲ ಚಲನ ಮುನಿ ಹೃದಯ ಮಪಿಚೋರ ಚಾತುರ ದಯಾಕರ ರಾಧಿ ಭೀಕರ ಮದ ಮಧುಕರ ಮಧುಪಥರ ಲಸ ಮನಯನ ಕಮಲ ದಲ ಚಲನ ಮುನಿ ಹೃದಯ ಮಪಿಚೋರ ಚಾತುರ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಬಿಲೋ ದ ಮೌಂಟನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಚೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಲವಿಂಗ್ ರಸ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ರಸರಾಜ್ ಬಿಲೋ ಗಿರಿರಾಜ್ ಅಮರೇಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರಭು ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ದ ಹಿಲ್ ದ ಟ್ರಿಲ್ ಥ್ರಿಲ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಹಿಲ್ ದ ಟ್ರಿಲ್ಸ್ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಅವ್ರ ಗೌರಂಗ ದರ್ಶನ್ ಪ್ರಭು ವಾಟ್ ಇ ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ರಸರಾಜ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಗಿರಿರಾಜ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಟೈಟಲ್ so uh, and above the mountain there was purification going on for whom ha huh? indra in kaliya navandila it is reverse above kaliya's hoods they were giving out the showering flowers they are clapping and they are playing instruments and vijbasis are enjoying krishna's beautiful dance they were glorifying you saw that all the words he is using are all describing krishna's different qualities and below krishna's lotus feet purification was going on for whom yeah Isn't it? So that's why his Nritya Madhra, hmm? his dance is so beautiful. Hmm? And his Sakyam with Krishna is so sweet. Hmm? Geetam Madhuram, Peetam Madhuram, Geetam Madhuram, Peetam Madhuram, Peetam Madhuram, Peetam Madhuram, Suptam Madhuram, ಕಮ್ ಮಧುರ Gita Madhuram. His Bhagavad Gita is sweet. Hmm? More than 5,000 years have passed, still people are studying Gita, all, all types of people. And his Pitam, his Pitambar was shining, which was observed by Bhishwam Pitama. And his eating is also beautiful to watch in the bank of Yamuna. Hmm? And he is eating God, Jagannath. Hmm? And his sleeping is also very beautiful. Hmm? Many, many Yashoda's friends come to see Krishna sleeping. Hmm? Sleeping beauty. and similarly lord ranganatha is lying and sleeping if somebody is sleeping who will come to see you go to meet your friend if he is sleeping you'll say okay i'll come later you'll go away <laughs> whereas the long queue of people go to see sleeping lord ranganatha huh? is lying in the ananta shisha and sleeping so everything about him is sweet his rupam his form is so beautiful and his telakam he wears the kasturi telakam huh? very beautiful mod rajapate rakila mod so i was showing this why <coughs> because <coughs> if one's mind becomes absorbed in krishna's beauty then one will not be attracted to the perishable beauty of this world so lord krishna tells uddhava that even though one may become a devotee still the old lingering attachments are there therefore there is a ashrama kept where one can gradually be purified of the material attachments and both husband wife can uplift their attraction to krishna sometimes a man is attached sometimes a woman is attached sometimes children are attached to many petty ties and the commodities so everybody in this world is suffering from the disease of material attachment hmm, in this world so that material attachment is called moha hmm? uh, uh, moha uh, it's called sneha and moha begins with sneha eventually becomes moha hmm? illusion like chitrakitu was attached to his harsha shoka correct no when that harsha shoka child was taken away what kind of you know he was falling and getting up and falling and getting up he went mad isn't it 
and the queen her hair was disheveled she was loudly shouting and yelling and crying because that is due to the metal attachment very strong metal attachment everybody in this world has to come to pass no? body has to die one day but they were so much uh, attached to the child so therefore here also this past time is about the metal attachment of bharat maharaj huh? it is said uh, one day after finishing his morning duties uh, evacuating urinating bathing bharat maharaj sat down on the bank of the river gandaki and he for a few minutes and began chanting his mantra beginning with the omkara tatra tada rajan harini pipasaya at that time one deer came there to the river uh, out of thirst for water jalashaya hmm? bya vyasham ekai vopa jagama so he is saying that certainly that uh, when it arrived near the river when that time he was observing it the king was observing it so while the doe was drinking with great satisfaction there was a loud sound of a lion very near by behind the bush so this was generally the deers are very fearful creatures if you will see they'll always look here and there with their eyes because they are afraid that any time tiger or lion may catch their neck Era friend so very fearfully it came and put the mouth in the water but hearing the loud sound of the lion nearby uh, vihvala it is said vihvala word is there uh, so the it becomes very the deer becomes extremely uh, afraid uh, you will see here uh, by nature the doe was always afraid of being killed by others always was looking suspiciously looking here and there with disturbed eyes uh, it was not fully satisfied by drinking water but now the deer has to think about saving his life huh? so she leapt across the river hmm. at that time the doe was pregnant when it jumped out of fear the baby deer fell from its womb into the flowing waters of the river yeah and so separated from its flock so the deer was already generally deers never go alone they go in a group but now we, the deer came to drink water so it was separated from its flock of deers distressed by its miscarriage having jumped across the river the deer became extremely tired and it fell down in the cave and died immediately hmm? they said so at that time bharat maharaj is seeing the deer here he was sitting on the bank of the river hmm? See, there are many animals, birds are uh, in this world. They, they die every day across, across the globe. You will see, but this thing happened in front of Bharat Maharaj's eyes, correct? Now, so and uh, kings are known for uh, protection. Shat Triya. Shat means what? To protect. So he protects women, protects children, protects old people, protects cows and brahmanas, uh, and he treats Praja like his own children, sons. So naturally. the king had sympathy for all creatures when he saw the mother deer dying and the baby deer drowning he felt sympathy so like a sincere friend he lifted the infant deer from the waves and knowing it to be motherless brought it to his ashram so here is a scene what what we said just now you are seeing here hmm? so he is picking up the tender baby deer from the river and uh, taking it to the ashram actually he is living like a monk he is a vanaprastha stage now they are called vanacharis huh? vanaprastha the vanachari later on one takes sanyasi in his con there is one his holiness uh, danavir swami maharaj he went through all the four orders he joined as a brahmachari then he became adhikari adhikari means 25 to 50 they are called adhikaris he was danavir das adhikari he was a grahastha then he took uh, vanaprastha then van uh, then danavir das vanachari and then now he is danavir swami maharaj now ran through all the four stages yes kan ya so i was fortunate to meet him in some of those stages i i have seen him very great sort so he also you will see bharat maharaj has and uh, taken to the vana prastha there is in the forest is wearing saffron also you can see that huh? and he is carrying the deer in the hand 
and taking it to the ashrama to protect the deer from the lions and tigers because right now the deer is very tender and helpless correct now so with that idea he is taking the deer and uh, so he thought that the deer is motherless now such a orphan should not be left behind one should pay attention thinking like that he uh, took it to the ashrama so here you find he developed affection for the deer over a period of time in the subsequent verses uh, uh, so that is also explained in this verses you will see see here he says he had almost reached the point of loving service to the lord but even in that platform he could fall down to metal platform lord used his example as a example to teach all of us mm-hmm. See, Prabhu is saying, spiritual salvation and liberation from material bondage must be worked out with great caution. Otherwise, a little discrepancy will cause one to fall down again into material existence. Whether you are Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vana, Prasanyasi, whoever it is, even if you have spent 10, 20, 30, 40 years in Krishna consciousness, 50 years also, we all have to be very alert and careful. You can see Dhruva Maharaj, he had seen Lord Vishnu eye to eye. After coming back, he had a Uh, confrontation against yakshas and he was about to become driven by rage and anger and develop hatred uh, for those yakshas but who protected him swambha muni came and gave advice samyacha rosha badram te he pacified him he told him it's not at all worthy for you to develop hatred for the yakshas because then you cannot go back to godhead hmm? by having hatred in the heart similarly bharat maharaj went to a very advanced stage in devotion service but he was getting distracted by this deer proper saying we should be compassionate by raising one from material platform to spiritual platform otherwise at any moment our spiritual advancement may be spoiled and we may fall down in onto the material platform uh, maharaj bharat compassion for the deer was the beginning of his fall down into the material world he saying that means See, there is a story of Shivananda Sen, who was actually uh, observing that one dog was taking part in the Harinam Sankirtan. Wherever the devotee is when the dog was coming behind. So he took pity on the dog and he fed some prasadam and the dog was very happy coming with him. At one time, Shivananda Sen had to go for um, paying some toll. So he told one of the uh, servants that please take care of the dog, feed it uh, three times a day, just like devotees. Huh? And he said, "What is saying? Dog is also Vaishnava." He said, "Feed him also prasad." But servant forgot to feed the dog. Huh? So, and Shivanand said, "When he saw that, when he came back, servant did not do his duty well. So he fasted for one day huh? for the sake because he said, 'You are my guest. I didn't take care of you, so I will also fast.' Huh? He also fasted like that. And then later on, he arranged for the dog to be taken to the uh, Jagannath Puri, and then the dog." Uh, had gone ahead with vaishnavas he went in front of la chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, mahaprabhu is sympathetic towards everybody but especially towards the dog because he was brought by whom shivan and sen so mahaprabhu sang uh, lord's holy names and the dog danced in front of him and mahaprabhu fed him some coconut pulp so the dog ate the coconut pulp from mahaprabhu's hands and then he lifted both the arms high just like we all lift our hands and sing like that standing on two legs lifting both the arms and dancing in in front of everyone to see and the dog left the material body and and was taken by a vaikuntha airplane back home back to godhead so prabhupad quotes that example of shivanand sen so shivanand sen also connected with a animal like a dog but he uplifted the dog to go back to godhead on the contrary bharat maharaj associated with the deer and instead of uplifting the deer he degraded correct no hmm. so this is this is a very important lesson to be learned in the shrimad bhagavatam it is said if a man um, marries a woman the woman can be like a fort you know fort for a king fort is a protection enemies cannot throw weapons on the king because king is hiding inside the fort shivaji maharaj had many many forts correct no so why a wife is considered to be fort for the husband a wife will not allow husband to walk the path of a religion if a man cannot control his senses if he goes to uh, some uh, low class woman like prostitute he will degrade himself in his character 
and he will fall down in his life. But a wife is a protector for the husband. She brings about culture at home, raises the children in, uh, with a spiritual culture and protects the husband from falling to religious activities. And by her affection keeps the husband within the control of the family life. And in this way, he remains uh, pure. So, in that, in that way, the uh, wife can be a grihini, can be a grihalakshmi. Eh? She can actually make the home like a temple and take husband and children, everybody together ahead in spiritual culture. And husband is more supposed to take shelter of guru and uh, draw that spiritual principles and knowledge from guru and then inspire the wife and children in that way. A wife is more active in practical religious activities at home. Like for example, keeping the altar very attractive and uh, you know, bathing the Lord, dressing the Lord, decorating the Lord with ornaments, uh, making different type of outfits for the deities and putting up festivals, you know, bringing other ladies and other families to celebrate festivals for the deities. Huh? So, women can do those things very effectively, engaging children also. She can call 20, 30 children from the neighborhood and teach them Krishna consciousness. Huh? Recite, make them recite shlokas, tell them Krishna stories, put up dramas through them. Huh? In this way, women can have their role to play at home keeping the home a very, very beautiful uh, spiritual place. And husband finds the home very attractive. So he is also inspired to go to Guru and learn philosophy and come and teach also. Now who says this? Bhakti Vinatakrita. When I returned home, he had ten children. Can you imagine? Yeah, ask any grihastha if you have ten children, can you manage the family? With one or two kids, their head is spinning. Huh? You have ten children, can you imagine? He says, when I come in the evening, some children are playing Mridangam Karta, they are dancing, they are singing, Aarti is going on. Huh? And the uh, altar is, you know, shining very beautifully and the, uh, the children, some children are worshipping the Lord in the altar. He says, when I come home in the evening, the Goloka is descending in my home, he is saying. Yehidinagiri he bhajana deki. Rehitek Goloko Bahai, he is saying. Hmm. So, the Grihastha's home can be as much uh, good as a temple. You provide it, the woman acts as a protector of the husband, and the husband is connected to Guru, and he is also advanced in philosophical understanding. And they both are engaged in devotional service, then the home becomes a spiritual world. Hmm. On the contrary, as I told you in the beginning of the class, if a husband becomes attached to wife's body, uh, uh, sometimes wife may tell her husband, why are you so foolish? You are talking about my lotus feet. Go to the temple and see Krishna's lotus feet. Hmm? Isn't it? You are uh, you are chasing after my body. That's what Chintamani told to... Uh, huh? Ah, Billa Mangal. She said, you have so much attachment for me. If I iota of this attachment you have for Krishna long before you would have attained Krishna. He said, for me, you are chasing after my perishable body. Even she knew philosophy. Hmm? She had to teach him philosophy. That's it. And then one day when she said this... Uh, uh, Billa Mangal woke up. He said, Chintamani, Somagirir, Gurome. He said, Oh, my spiritual master in previous life, his name was Somagiri, and he is speaking through your mouth now. I will not waste a single moment now. Immediately I will go to Vrindavan. And he went to Vrindavan and became a pure devotee. He wrote Krishna Karanamritam and all that after that. Because she spoke so strongly, sometimes a strong chastisement works also. Huh? And he woke up. It's like a sleeping person, you know, give a slap, he gets up. Huh? <laughs> she gave a slap with her words. Huh? Give up your moha, she said. Then, nashto moha. Moha was gone after that. Hmm? So, attraction of a man for a woman or attraction of man for gold huh? or silver or for land or for some material commodities. Huh? Some people are attracted to flashy cars. Huh? Some are attracted to gorgeous buildings. Huh? Now people are attracted to big businesses, money making. So all these things, these attractions become a problem or a great stumbling block in the devotion service if one ignores God and godly duties. Hmm. We are not against any of this, provided a person is keeping Krishna in the center. Like one boy said, Prabhu, in your lecture you are discouraging me. I wanted to become a big businessman and earn I want to become a millionaire. I said, become a millionaire and give 50% to Krishna also. <laughs> oh, that I have to think about it probably. <laughs> Why are you so hesitant to give to Krishna? Make a lot of money and give a lot to Krishna also. And if you don't want to give Krishna, then don't go in that direction. Become a serious devotee. Hmm? Isn't it? 
So, that's what Prabhupada is saying, we should be compassionate by raising one from material platform to spiritual platform. So, and then here Prabhupada is warning in that para, you see, spiritual salvation and liberation from material bondage must be worked out with great caution. So, we should be cautious of Maya, conscious of Krishna. Correct, no? So, Bharat Maharaj was little careless, not cautious. Correct, no? Should we be cautious or careless? Some people are careless, some people are casual. It is said if you are casual, you become casualty. Hmm? You know, casualty means accident. Hmm? So casual people get accidents. Like if you are driving a car, if you doze a little bit, what is likely to happen? Huh? Accident can happen. So, in our life also, uh, we have to be very attentive in the practice of devotion service. Little discrepancy will cause one to fall down into material existence, he says. Yeah. Yeah. See, here, this is the verse I wanted to show you. This verse. All of you repeat this verse. Tasyahava. Yena kunaka. Uchair etasmin. Krita nijabi manasya. Ahar. Ahar, ahar. Tat. Poshana. Palana. Lalana. Prenana. Anudhye, anudhyane natma, niyama saha, yamaha, purusha, paricharyadaya, ekaikashaha, ekaikashaha, katipaye nahar, ganena, viyujjavanaha, kilasarva evo davasan. See what he is saying. What he did with the deer, ahar ahar means day by day. That means daily what he did. He had Krita Nija Bhimanasya. See, who accepted the calf as his own son. See, he left his prince there, where? In the kingdom. Now he has accepted another. Here, another son. Correct, no? So this is the danger in this world. You know, this is called as purchasing trouble. You pay money and purchase trouble. It's like that. So, he accepted a new relationship with this cow. So, ahara means day by day what happened? Tat poshana means maintaining that cow. Palana, protecting from danger. See, there was one married family in one city, husband, wife, and they had one boy living as a paying guest in the top. So, this wife was beaten by the husband, slapped by the husband. So she wanted to open her heart to somebody. So she would go up and talk to the boy and say that my husband is beating. And what this boy should do, he should connect this couple to some couple who can help them, correct now? Or ask them to go to some counselor or something. He started telling the wife, don't worry, I will take care of you. Huh? You will not do anything. Hmm? So, and then um, and she was telling my husband is not giving money. You please give me money for purchasing this, purchasing that. So he, he would take her in the bike and... In this way, gradually he became contaminated by her association. One day the husband saw that his wife is having many facilities uh, without him giving her money. Then naturally what question comes? Who is giving? Uh, then he understood that this fellow is supporting. And then he saw that they are getting intimate with each other. And he saw a little bit of this boy and threw him out. He broke his bones and threw him out. And this boy suddenly realized he had spent 6 lakh rupees on her. Uh, whatever money he is supposed to save and give to his parents, he was giving it to her. Because he was getting some affection. For, he is expecting affection from her. And she is expecting shelter from him like a father giving shelter to a daughter. Her expectation was she wanted a, some man, like a fatherly figure to help her. Correct, no? She had no ill intention. But this fellow had ill intention. You understand, no? He didn't see her like a daughter. He's a young boy, she's a young woman. He saw her like an enjoyable object. So for that he had to pay six lakh rupees and get his bones broken. And and this is called what? Purchasing. Don't purchase trouble in life. Because you are not her husband to maintain her. If a woman's husband is beating her, you should tell her, go to your parents. Because her her parents are her shelter. Because her one responsibility of the lady is her parents. Another responsibility is the husband. 
if a lady has a problem with the husband she should go to parents home and this fellow foolishly he entered that family problem and he got into trouble correct now what is it called as you remember these two words don't forget huh? if you ever purchase table remember this class <laughs> therefore that's what this whole did tat poshana see you may wonder are here dear talk is going on why prabhu is talking about uh, you know man woman attraction actually for different people the dears are different <laughs> for a attached man the wife or the woman becomes a dear for this boy also that woman became dear for some people smartphone is a dear you have seen that version of hari krishna rakshana beep beep it makes sound that means the dear wants attention and then if you are going to keep the bid bag aside and go to the smartphone we are exactly like bharat maharaj no difference for different people different dears correct no one shlok for every folk you know different folks different shlokas is there no like that for different people different dears correct no all of you think for a moment what is dear for you in your life So, what is that uh, dear? The dear is that thing which is your material attachment. What are your weaknesses? Don't tell anybody. Keep it with you. Huh? Huh? But read this first time in that light. Huh? I have some. Everybody should think. I have some weaknesses for some people. Something. Some are too much attached to. Like you know, Dhritarashtra was too much attached to his son. Result: the whole dynasty was destroyed. See, affection is good, but not attachment. See, Rishabhadev had affection for his hundred sons, and he put all the hundred sons and gave them very good upadesh. That is real affection. Good father, Suniti had affection for Druva. She guided him to go to Lord Vishnu. These are examples of good mother and good father who had affection for their children. But Dhritarashtra had attachment to son, and the result was uh, everything was destroyed. And Kaikeyi was attached to making Bharat as a king. <clears throat> Everybody was angry with her. Bharat was angry. You know, Lakshman was angry. Ayodhya Vasis were very upset. You know, even Dasharath died also. The whole Ayodhya became filled with gloom because of her attachment to her son. Attachment is not good actually. Attachment, uh, attachment actually will cause the end result of attachment will be tragedy. Look at uh, Chitragetu and his wife. Their attachment to Harsha Shoka. it ended in tragedy correct no so attachment is dangerous metal attachments but affection is good we don't say one should not be affectionate to wife or children and family because affection is a symptom of soul proper says if you don't have affection you are a stone proper says huh? if somebody says i have no attachment huh? at all i have no affection for anybody like huh? one fellow went to an ashram a guruji asked uh, what do you want he said i want to join the ashram he said why I have no feeling for anybody in this world," he said. And uh, Guruji said, "Better you go home now. <laughs> Stay with parents and develop some feeling. Then you come. Because for becoming a bhakta, you need feeling for Krishna. Mm-hmm. If you don't have any feeling towards anybody, how will you develop that bhakti feeling? Mm-hmm. Because if you don't have any feeling, you are a stone. Mm-hmm. Therefore, affection is natural. But yeah, what is the difference between affection and attachment? You may have a question. Correct? No. You will see that one who is affectionate. can say no if the person is demanding something unreasonable hmm. you will see that like yudhishthir maharaj he is not attached to draupadi he is telling draupadi hey three years are only over in the forest now you want to go back and attack kauravas huh? what kind of thing you guys are talking you and bhima huh? like that yudhishthir maharaj could stop her from her uh, wrath from her anger and also could uh, control her because he was very knowledgeable he was very wise he was very detached also so he was affectionate to draupadi but not attached to her he was not controlled by her you see in the same manner we all in our life also it's a duty of um, everybody to take care of their mother father you know wife children everybody affectionately actually god has put them under you not for you to exploit them attachment means ex- exploitation affection means service you will see that so people exploit one another duryodhana was exploiting blackmailing his father dhritarashtra correct ha huh? he was uh, how he could emotionally blackmail him because he knew that he is attached 
some children come to parents and say, Mama, give me money for the cocoa chocolate. And the mother is thinking, you know, how to say no to my child? If I say no, the love will be affected, you know. Then the mother gives the money. And the child goes and eats. And the child knows anything I want. You know, my mother, father love me too much and they'll pamper me and they can't say no. So, in this way, the, the children who are pampered too much, they don't become good leaders. Huh? My father was a millionaire, but he will never unnecessarily waste money. One day, I, I lost my pencil, small pencil. I go, went to my father and said, Papa, give me a pencil. He said, show me the old pencil, he will always say. I said, why are you asking about the old one that's finished, I said. So he said, I want to see whether it is finished, he said. Show me how much it is finished. I see, I said, see, you are a millionaire, you have so much money. <laughs> why, are, why are you so bothered about this small pencil? He said, he said, nothing doing, unless you show that pencil, you will not get another one. I had to spend two hours, at last I found it inside one file, it was there. Then I showed him the small pencil, he said, still you can use it, he said. <laughs> it has to become more half size, then only I will give you. He will not waste a single penny, you see. Huh? He was very strict. And so, actually, if you unnecessarily don't waste Krishna's energy, you, you teach people like, therefore, he was affectionate to me. He was liberal in many things. But at the same time, you will not waste things also. So, if you are going to be attached, people can emotionally blackmail you, if you are attached to anybody. There are women who blackmail their husband or father or son, if they are emotionally attached. They will mislead them. Same with men also. Men can exploit women if they are emotionally attached to them. If emotionally attached to somebody, you will be blackmailed. Therefore, we should know how to be affectionate and not be attached. And we should be detached and not be indifferent. What is the meaning of detached and not indifferent? You know, Dhruva uh, Maharaj was detached. At the same time, he was not indifferent to Draupadi. He was affectionate to Draupadi. So, these are very deep things that are taught in the scriptures. A husband, a man has the duty to protect his wife and children and be affectionate to them, kind to them. He is a protector, provider and guide for the family. Hmm? He should bring all the grocery and everything and put up the family. He is a provider. He should protect them. Protecting the topmost protection is spiritual protection. And materially also he should protect them. Hmm? And he should provide for them and be a guide for them like a compass for them to advance in spiritual life. At the same time, uh, here, as he says here, Aharaha, Tat Poshana, Palana, Lalana. What he was doing? He was maintaining that calf, protecting from dangers, raising it or showing love to it by kissing and so on. Prinana, petting it in love. Anudhyanena, by such attachment. Atmaniyamaha, that means his personal activities for taking care of his body. Huh? That means he even ignored his body. Saha Yamaha, with his spiritual duties also, such as non-violence, all and simplicity. Purusha Paricharya Adeha, including worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and performing spiritual duties. Yeka Yeka Shaha means it doesn't happen suddenly. Yeka Yeka Shaha means little by little. Day by day, you will see that material attachments will degrade your spiritual duties. You will see that. Someday you will see that morning 16 rounds didn't get over. Four rounds are remaining. You will think that I will stand in the afternoon. I stand in the evening. At night, 10 o'clock, you find four rounds are pending. That means this is a sign of, you know, fall down purposes. We are degrading in our consciousness. Keeping rounds for late night like that. It doesn't suddenly happen. Similarly, you go home, you know, that is parents are watching TV. So you think, you know, I should not be fanatic, you know. Just for that... You know, for them to feel nice, I will also just give them company for some time, five minutes. And you go for five minutes and they get up and walk out and you are watching. Uh, you are watching for another two hours, changing the channel, this channel, that channel, you know, watching different, different things like that. So, in this way, you will see everything starts little by little. Maya doesn't want your 24 hours. She says, just give me one minute. And from that one minute, she will like slowly extract half an hour, one hour, two hours. Eventually, you will suddenly find <coughs> Maya has occupied your whole system. Similar to that uh, story of the sheikh, you must have heard. Now, sheikh was sleeping inside a tent and the camel you know, put his head inside and asked, Sir, sir, it is too cold outside. Is it alright if I have my head inside? And the sheikh was so tired, he said, Alright, alright, he said. 
after some time the camel was thinking, this solo is very comfortable inside. And I am outside, my whole body is freezing huh, in cold. Then the camel asked, Sir, sir, it is too cold, can I put my two front legs inside? Huh? And the sheikh said, all right, all right, he said. Then he put uh, two legs inside. And suddenly the sheikh was feeling chill all over the body, <laughs> freezing cold. And he opened his eyes and he saw the stars in the sky. <laughs> Do you know why? <laughs> and he saw the moon also. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> Camel occupied the whole tent <laughs> and he kicked him outside. <laughs> that is how Maya comes. Maya will first put leg and say, Sir, sir, can I come in? Huh? And if you are attached, what do you say? Okay, all right, all right, no problem. Little bit is all right, okay. And little by little by little, hmm? she will occupy whole everything. So therefore, Jada Bharata became so strict. Later on, when Bharata became Jada see, Bharata symbolizes carelessness. Jada Bharata symbolizes caution. Bharata is lenient and Jada Bharata is strict. You will see that. You know? Jada Bharata behaved like a deaf, dumb and you know, man who cannot speak or who cannot hear you. Correct, no? Later on when the same Bharata became dear in one life and then third, uh, third life he became Jada Bharata. He was very strict. You see, one day I was going in the train, I was sitting at the berth. My train journey is the only time I can study a lot. Huh? I study Bhagavatam for 20 hours, sometimes 15 hours also. I like long train journeys. Many people tell me, can we give you a flight ticket? I don't want any flight ticket, I want train ticket. <laughs> Why I want train ticket? You can study, nobody can disturb you. Go to the birth, just open Bhagavatam, hours and hours you can study. That's why I underlined all these things. And you can make notes and everything. So when I was sitting, my assistant was crying. Prabhuji, do you know? Down, uh, those who are sitting, they are Tamil family. He said, I told him, shh. Don't tell them, I said. Whenever I got down, that family talked to me in Tamil. Uh, I mean, they were, I only talked to them in Hindi. So, <laughs> so they thought I am a North Indian. They were thinking like that. So, and uh, it was going on. I was speaking generally in Hindi only to them. After the train was about to reach the destination, just half an hour before I came down, then I spoke to them in Tamil. Hmm? <laughs> of course, they were very happy. <laughs> <laughs> we never knew that you speak Tamil, and they were saying. And they started lo, 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 talking. <laughs> they said, we wanted to, we could have nicely associated with you. What is association? They were only talking, they don't, never let me talk. Huh? Talking so many things. So, anyway, I allowed them to talk whatever they wanted and told a little bit about Prabhupada, and then I got down from the train. Then I told my assistant, See, why I told you not to tell my language? Because I, I followed the footsteps of Jada Bharata. Correct, no? See, Jada Bharata, why he was like deaf and dumb? So that he can focus on the Supreme Lord. Because if these people knew I am a Tamil fellow, my Lord, they will strip off my time. Hmm? They will get me down and they will talk low, 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 low. Throughout the journey, all my time would be gone. So sometimes we can act as Jada Bharata in situations where you think people will unnecessarily waste your time. You agree? Better to be deaf and dumb in places if people do prajalpa. Correct, no? How many of you understood this example? You understood it? Oh, everybody understood. Okay. <laughs> so, here, that's what we are saying. See, he gave up his bodily care, his own bodily care. He gave up his spiritual duties hmm, in this way. Purusha Paracharya Adeha Yeka Yekashaka Every day, little by little, day by day, Katipayena Aha Ganena uh, with the passing of the days, Vyujyamanaha means he gave up those activities. You can see in the picture I showed you how he gave up. Hmm. See, if you look at the picture, you can see he is offering Ahuti to Vishnu, you know, in the yagnik fire, but he is not attentive. Huh? Where is his eyes? That is the point. He has become distracted. He has become distracted. So, we also can check where is my attraction. See, first principle is attraction. If we are distracted, that means we are going for an alternative attraction. That's the meaning. Distraction is, the, what is the definition of distraction? Alternative attraction. So, here his attraction is not Vishnu now. His attraction has become dear now. 
because out of the five A's, the first A is attraction. Little attraction you have for something, then only comes attention. And when attention comes, uh, then by the continued attention on something, you develop the third stage is attachment. Attachment. Attachment comes. If you continuously focus, jhayato vishyan punsa leads to sangasteshu pajayate. That means if you repeatedly contemplate on something, like I have been contemplating on Prabhupada's lectures for many years, I saw that the more you hear, more you hear, more you hear and contemplate, then you develop attachment to those lectures. You develop, uh, and that is a good attachment, correct, no? Spiritual attachment is good attachment. Material attachment is condemnable. Hmm? His Holiness Bhakti Tirith Swami, 10 days he stayed in Chopadi temple one time, huh? in the 1990s. So I was very fortunate. I was there with him all 10 days, attending all his programs and everything. So he will make everybody dance all over the temple hall. Huh? One of the morning Guru Puja time, he made everybody dance so much. Everybody was sweating. Huh? Then everybody sat down. Then he also sat and started the Bhagavatam class. After singing Jairana Madhava, he said, and then he said, Dear devotees, the goal of life is to become mad, he said. And everybody was wondering, you really? To become mad? <laughs> And he said, yes, the goal of life is to become mad after Krishna, he said. Uh, Unless you become mad after Madan Mohan, he said. Uh, Who is Madan Mohan? Krishna, yeah, Madan Mohan. From the Sanskrit word, mother only, English word mad has come. Therefore, Madan Mohan is Madan Mohan, he said. Uh, Because he is from America and uh, Africa, so he speaks like that. He said, unless you become mad after Madan Mohan, he said. You will become mad after a woman, he said. (laughs) So the choice is yours. Whom you want to become mad after? The choice is yours, he said. So here also, he is not becoming mad after Krishna. So naturally he is mad after dear. Therefore the attraction leads to attention. And repeated attention can lead to attachment. And anything... Anything you repeatedly pay, whether material or spiritual. Like for example, look at the mother. The mother bathes the child, dresses the child, decorates the child. Sometimes the mother puts a gopi dress to your girl, little girl. Huh? Sometimes she puts a rubber band above her, you know, like this. Sometimes she makes jata like this. Correct? Right? Sometimes Indian dress, sometimes frock or something. So when she is decorating the child, taking the child to school and bringing back, feeding the child, tending to the needs of the child, the child enters into her mati, uh, into her chitta. So you can ask any mother, effortlessly mothers can see the form of the child even in their absence. Do you agree? You ask any mother, will tell you. Uh. In the same manner, child also can effortlessly think of the mother's form uh, without any difficulty, even in their absence also. Because they are repeatedly attending to the child and the child is with the mother, they develop a very strong bond like that. Same thing we should do with the deities and same thing we should do with Krishna also. If you are repeatedly hearing the message of the Srimad Bhagavatam, you are developing attraction to the deity form of the Lord. Hmm? And then you are repeatedly interacting. Spiritual interactions you increase and that will lead to attachment. Hmm? And reduce the material interactions. Hmm? Therefore we say maximize Krishna time, minimize Maya time. Hmm? Because when you maximize Krishna time and Krishna interaction, attachment will develop. Like if a boy and girl marry, for example, parents bring a boy and girl together. On the day of marriage, they may not even know each other. They have never spoken before. And not that they have great love for each other. In Indian system of marriage, generally, nowadays people will find partners before only. But actually, ideally speaking, in Vedic marriage, uh, boy and girl, whatever the parents fix, they come together. But you will see when the girl is repeatedly serving the husband, cooking for the husband, you know, tending to the needs of the husband, Eventually, she develops affection for the husband and he develops affection for her. So strongly that after five years, they become inseparable. You have seen that? Huh? Sometimes you find in a family, when a wife dies at the age of 75 or 80, the husband will die within three months or six months. You have seen that? Because they cannot be separated. They have developed such a strong attachment. How? Because of repeated, jhayato vishayan, repeated interaction. In one sense, it is good also. Why it is good? Because husband wife should stay unitedly for the whole life, you know, assisting one another in spiritual life. Hmm? In one sense, it is good. In the same manner, with Krishna also, if you increase the interaction with Krishna, you are going to develop attachment to Him. That's a secret actually. Attraction leads to attention. 
Attention leads to attachment. And attachment leads to absorption, complete absorption. Absorption means uh, avishta, we say. Vishaya avishta chittanam vishnur avesha na bhavet. This is from Vishnu Purana. Vishnu Purana says, Vishaya avishta chittanam. If your chitta, if your heart is absorbed in Vishaya vasanas of this world like the deer and other things, then Vishnu avesha na bhavet means you cannot have absorption in Krishna. Bhogaishwarya prasaktanam taya apahrita chetana. You are just dragged away by Bhoga and Aishwarya. Bhoga means attraction for the opposite sex. And Aishwarya means big things. Like for example, big bungalow, big car, you know, big shopping mall. You know, one is fascinated. Oh, my Lord, how much material opulence like that. Gold, silver, diamond. One is fascinated by that. So that is Aishwarya. Bhoga and if you are going to absorb our mind in that, then taya apakrita chetadam. You are being dragged away by those things. And samadho na vidyate. You cannot have samadhi on Krishna, he is saying. And that's what happened to Bharat. Uh, Bharat actually went to forest for a good purpose, spiritual purpose, ultimate goal of life. But he got distracted. That's the lesson we have to take uh, with us today. Huh? That we should be very careful in spiritual life. Compassion is not bad. But the compassion can become a great danger if it is misplaced compassion. That is the, you will see that huh? he uh, neglected his sadhana, spiritual sadhana, in the name of his duty. So, you all are students, you have your studies huh? and you have your Krishna consciousness. Mm-hmm. Sometimes some, somebody becomes extremely uh, sports oriented or study oriented, or some boys are attached to Hollywood, Bollywood songs, some are attracted to movies which they were watching, secretly they want to watch movies and everything. So, these are all going to be distracted. You will see that. Uh, uh, two things are important for you. Your academics and your spiritual life. They should go like a railway line. Mahamanusmara, huh? Yudhyacha. And the third thing, you should shoot it down. What is it called as? Called sense gratification. No. Huh? Shoot that down. Keep only your spiritual duty, academic duty. Don't get carried away by sense gratification, which comes in varieties of forms. Hmm? So, in this way, you got carried away, you see that. He was thinking about the deer. Oh, this deer is helpless, forced by time, it's alone, it has taken my shelter, totally dependent on me, has full faith in me. I think he thought. So what I should do, I should be non envious. I should not I should be selfless and raise and protect and gratify fondly. How can I neglect it? Although it's disturbing in my spiritual life, I know it. But what can I do? This has, this duty has come upon me. But it is purchasing trouble. He didn't understand that. Because there was no one more devotee there to tell him, Prabhu, you are becoming slack in spiritual life. Somebody should be there to catch our ear. There was no one around. He was alone. Therefore, in Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said, practicing spiritual life alone means you are in hallucination, Prabhupada said. Huh? You, in Kali Yuga, Shange Shakti Kali Yuga. Uh, in Kali Yuga, the Shakti is in coming unitedly and Chanting the holy name and practicing spiritual life. It's very difficult in Kali Yuga to remain alone, like what Bharat Maharaj is doing. Even in those days, by living alone, he fell down. Eh? What to speak of now in Kali Yuga? You can be easily packed, sacked, and carried away by Maya very easily. Eh? Very easily. Because Maya comes in multiple forms. Uh, one devotee was selling, just see this small silicon chip. The silicon chip is from where? From sand. <laughs> And sand a small silicon chip, and that silicon chip is shaking the whole world now. Eh? You can see that. Maya, Maya, Maya can come in a silicon chip also, in a piece of sand also she can come. Eh? You know, you can have 50,000 songs now in a CD-ROM, isn't it? In a small thing. You can have so many things. So, in this way you find that Maya comes in varieties of forms, subtle forms nowadays. Eh? Subtle and subtle forms. So, therefore, one uh, one has to uh, not neglect one sadhana. By being, Sripad Ramanacharya says, just to put yourself in the association of devotees. Don't worry about anything else, he says. Just be with devotees. That alone will take care of everything else. Mm-hmm. Papa is saying, be cautious. Don't neglect. Neglecting rules and regulations and chanting Hare Krishna will cause fall down. Rise early in the morning. Bathe. Attend Mangalarti. Worship deities. Chant Hare Krishna. Study Vedic literatures. And follow all rules prescribed by Acharyas and Guru. Papa says, 
So morning program, what it does? Chanting destroys material desires, gives determination and awakens sleeping soul. Nice, no? So this is chanting. Chanting chur chur kar dega all the material desires. If one is chanting intensely and it gives determination, willpower will be increased by chanting and it awakens a sleeping soul. Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, in that song he says, Yeneshi Aushadi Maya, Masipar Lagi says, Harinama Mahamantra, yeah. So it wakes up the sleeping soul. And also, Yannamashiti Matra Yana Puman Bhavati Nirmalaha. Nirmalaha means it removes all the material desires and gives determination to practice spiritual life. And if you are not chanting, we get spiritual weakness and we are deviated into material ambitions, you see. And regulative principles, what it will do, if you follow four regs, we lose our desire for sinful habits. Not only you give up sinful habits, you lose your desire only. How many of you are eating meat before, but now you have given up? Yeah, correct, no? Now, any of you, do you lament that you have given up meat eating? Huh? Now, you have no attraction for it now, isn't it? You have lost your desire because you are following the regulative principles. Huh? And you get a firm conviction and bhava for Krishna, huh? if you strictly follow this. Then studying Prabhupada books, discuss the subject minutely and inspect it, uh, scrutinizingly study from various angles. But such study plus seva, if you do this, that gives you knowledge and bliss. And Prabhupada book study gives knowledge and when you practically render seva, you get blissful experience. And you become convinced and it is very easy to do the morning austerities. And you become ultimately successful in Krishna consciousness. And so hearing is compared to eating grains and drinking water. Hmm? Both are important, isn't it? So hearing lectures and reading Prabhupada books is like eating grains and drinking water. If an ordinary man does not eat, he will grow weak and die. To hear and explain the scriptures uh, is more important than just reading. Not only you all should read, you also should preach to some people whatever you have read in order to remember what you read. Hmm? Hearing and explaining leads to assimilation of the philosophy. So these are all very important things. Uh, chanting, regular principles, studying Prabhupada books and hearing lectures. Uh. So if you take care of these things, we will not fall prey to Maya. Hmm? We will be... So deviation causes fall down, though highly advanced. We should never think we are very advanced simply because one has accepted sannyas order, you see. If sannyasis have to be careful, what to speak of as? Huh? Be very careful. Hmm. So, okay, we'll stop here. You have been uh, very patiently. This was a very important verse which I showed you. Hmm. So, this is the purport which I have made it into slide, which I showed you just now, based on this purport only. Hmm. So, one question for three, four minutes and I'll stop. After that, anybody? Yes? Ah, please give us the mic. Where is the mic? Hare Krishna, Guruji. Oh, Hare Krishna, yeah. Uh, yes, Guruji. Okay, here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Guruji, if we do have um, attachment to some object or something, is there any way out that we can convert way out that? Is develop attachment to Krishna. Okay, Guruji. Then you have higher Param Drishtva. We were today. Uh, next question, there. Give him. There, my. And attachment to Krishna, we are not saying that somehow you become attached. We are saying a procedure also for that. What procedure I told you today? Increase your interaction with Krishna in varieties of forms. So Krishna comes as holy rivers, Ganga, Yamuna, Kaveri. Krishna comes as holy deities. He comes as holy books. He comes as holy prasadam. He comes as holy name. He comes as holy devotees. He comes as holy deities. He comes in multiple forms. Increase your interaction with spiritual objects. Follow the 64 principles given by Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Devotion book. Nectar of Devotion book is called as Law Book of Iskhan, Prabhupada says. Read those 64 principles and follow them. Huh? If you follow, you are increasing your interaction with the Lord. That's how we... We, we don't have to even worry about giving a mental attachment. You automatically give up when you advance in increasing these activities. Yes, one question quick. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, my question is, like you said that we should be disciplined like Jad Bharat. Uh, but my question is that those times were a little different and today like people are in corporates and in colleges. So how can we be disciplined and at the same time be not be indifferent to uh, daily people we meet? I yeah, mean, say we can for example, with say you are working in a computer project where there are five, six people who are not devotees. Huh? You can be business-like while dealing with them. 
Uh, for example, for the work sake, you can deal. If they tell you hi, you can also say hi. If they say good morning, you say good morning. You don't have to say Hare Krishna, you don't have to say. You, know. but you won't uh, lose anything by saying hi to them, correct? Right? No? So, you can, uh, you can be friendly at the same time, don't open your heart to them. For example, if you, say if you are dozing in the company, for example, they ask you, why are you dozing? You say, I got up early in the morning, I have to chant 16 rounds, if you say like that. They will say, I get up at 8 o'clock, why do you get up so early? Then they will tell you, just stop chanting, yeah, why are you going to scorn? Therefore, you don't. Like that they will say. On the contrary, you tell a devotee, you, Prabhuji, in company I am feeling like uh, dozing. The devotee will ask you, what time you sleep at night? If you say, I sleep at 11.30, ah, that's the problem. Huh? Instead of 11.30, you sleep at 9.30, you won't sleep. You know, you sleep at 9.30 and rise early and chant and go to company, you will never feel sleep. So, therefore, we should open our mind only to devotees. So, non-devotees, be business-like. You, you, you can actually be superficially friendly for the sake of business sake and we don't open our heart to them. So, Bhaktivana Thakur says, if you lovingly deal with somebody, you are, you are making yourself vulnerable to them. So, for devo- with devotees, you can be vulnerable because devotees will not exploit you. Whereas, outsiders can exploit you if you become vulnerable to them. Agreed? See, in home, many times all of you are willing to open your mind and be vulnerable to your near and dear ones because you know that Near endurance will not exploit you, correct? No? So, in the same manner, in company, you cannot open your heart to non devotees. They are going to drag you to Maya. No? Therefore, for the business sake, we can deal with them business like. Like, I am a college student, I can exchange books or notebooks with them. I can talk about career. I can talk about the growth prospects. I can talk about some subject like mathematics, something which I don't know, I can ask them. And, I, and maybe small things you may talk. How are you? You know, when are you going home? When are you coming to college? How was your stay at home? Hi, good morning. That's all. Huh? You don't uh, go and open your heart about your life and everything to them. Regarding your opening your life, you open your life to devotees and take help. All right? Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, Puji. Can I go, uh, go on, uh, Premana, put till 10? Okay. It's a very, Puji. Yeah, where is the mic? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Puri, I just want to know, Puri, like for the core spiritual practices, which we do like morning, chanting, uh, Puri, we start with very good motive, like we for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna, but eventually with time passes, it, the, it dovetails into material desire, like getting my four o'clock will make me, uh, Guru and Krishna happy, but then it turns to like, because if I don't early rise, then the chanting flows to full day and whole thing goes away. So that pure desire turns to a material desire. Because of that material desire, it fades away with time. So, Puri, how to protect it so it remains pure because that activity will remain pure then? Actually, we, we all experience that, uh, you know, good things for them to last for longer time, we need uh, discipline. Correct, no? So, for you to have a pakka um, behavior or habit, three things are important. Know the right, choose the right, discipline the right. Huh? So, know the right, Choose the right, discipline the right. So, if you know what are the right things uh, which I should do from morning to night, write them down. Then now you know the right based on your teachings and everything. And do the right means start doing them. But if you are becoming slack, then you have to discipline yourself. Say for example, somebody is not able to read Prabhupada books. What they should do? Just before taking lunch or dinner, half an hour I will read Prabhupada book. And only then I will eat dinner. You make it a point like that. It's called a queuing, we call it. Queue it either before or after. Then it will happen, surely. Fixed time of the day, daily, same time if you do one activity, it becomes a routine for you. So, three things I will tell you, very simple for cultivating any habit. Huh? Well, number one is, don't try to bring about a large scale change in a quick shot, in one round. For example, somebody sleeping at 11 o'clock. Don't try to suddenly sleep at 9 o'clock, you won't get sleep at all. Huh? For one, uh, every week, reduce your sleeping, I mean, reduce your timing by 15-15 minutes. If you are sleeping at 11 and getting up at, say, 7, for example. So, sleep at 10.45 uh, and then get up 15 minutes before. Got it, no? Then sleep by, you know, 10.30, then second week. And third week, 10.15. And fourth week, 10. Like that, gradually, this is like, you know, eating a watermelon, you can't eat like this. You slice it and eat it. That's the first thing. You know, second thing, 
you should have a role model in any good habit you want to cultivate um, so find out which student is pakka and rising early in the morning it never fails any of you know one student name you would like to suggest somebody who is pakka amongst your friends he will never miss getting up early in the morning every day he will be up by 3 o'clock or 3:30 he will be up are there you seen that yeah so if you know somebody like that so that's your role model correct no you can go to the role models and tell them please give me your mercy huh you know please inspire me you know how you are so strict what time you sleep you, know, you wake me up also like that you can talk and then there are peers peers means equal friends who all have a habit of sleeping early getting up early so you have to associate with them more huh? for example if you go to the room where somebody always sleeps at 11:30 12:00 1 o'clock like that if you associate with them then they are also going to drag you late night huh? if you go to another room another place where early sleepers sleep so you should associate with the early sleepers then you will also sleep early correct no the day time also if there are two rooms one room is a sleeping room another room is a studying room which room you should go to huh? some people are putting a board muchukunda room they are saying see muchukunda was sleeping after helping demigods after hard work people without doing any service they want to sleep and say muchukunda they are saying okay which room you should go to sleeping room or studying room because day time you don't want to sleep then go to the studying room so because association leads to activity and activity leads to attitude three a's huh? like if you associate with good boys who don't sleep in the day then you also do the activity of studying and then your attitude goes high and if you associate with the boys who are sleeping in the day time then you also do the activity of sleeping then your attitude goes down therefore association matters a lot huh? so peer association and a role model and cutting into slices three things i told you any habit can be accomplished very easily if you do these three things hmm? all right uji the activity becomes a part of a life but that consciousness the pure consciousness activity, required don't worry the consciousness you don't have to worry too much at the moment actually krishna says tasmatvam indriyani aadau he says niyamya bharatarsho easiest thing for you to do is to start with behavior then thinking you know then attitude so these are deeper and deeper things attitude is in the chitta thinking is in the mind and behavior is in the body which is more most easy to do see wearing dhoti kurta tilak is more easy correct not to become a pure dhoti vaishnava is it's not so easy <laughs> like when i joined ncc you know the first day only they gave us the uniform of a soldier uniform correct no khaki khaki and then everything and they gave a gun we were holding gun upside down <laughs> they told you have to hold like this similarly when you become a devotee immediately you are given a bid bag and tell like these things come very easily but just because proper is also having bid bag we are also having bid bag in a proper wearing tilak like we are wearing tilak like. that doesn't mean we are pure devotees correct no so it takes time to become pure devotee internally so let us start with externals gradually it goes to internal as you become deeper and deeper in krishna consciousness all right shail prabhupad ki agar bhakta rinda ki thank you very much हरे कृष्णा सो प्रभु जी गेव अ वंडरफुल क्लास एंड ही स्पोक अबाउट हाउ कंसिडरिंग टेम्पररी थिंग्स टू बी परमानेंट हाउ दिस इज मोहा बट इफ सम हाउ वी कैन एब्सॉर्व अवर माइंड इन कृष्णा how all our material attachments will be gone so he told five things so you have to tell after attraction what comes attention, attention. attention. after attention, attention. then attention. then attention. affection yes so like to thank his grace rajesh shampru for giving such a wonderful class by three times loudly chanting vivo 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 his grace rajesh shampru ki ja Shila Prabhu Pad Ki. Also, there is one very important announcement.